Continue reading Krishna book, chapter 12, the last paragraph, uh, chapter 12, Krishna book by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. Generally, the Kshatriyas or the administrative class are always busy with their political affairs and they have very little chance to hear about the transcendental pastimes of Lord Krishna. But while Parikshit Maharaj was hearing these transcendental pastimes, he considered himself to be very fortunate because not only was he hearing Krishna's pastimes, but he was doing so from Sukadeva Goswami, the greatest authority of Srimad Bhagavatam. Thus, being requested by Maharaj Parikshit, Sukadeva Goswami continued to speak about the transcendental pastimes of Lord Krishna in the matter of his form, qualities, fame and paraphernalia. Thus ends the Bhaktivedanta purport of the 12th chapter of Krishna uh, book, The Killing of the Agasura Demon. Now we are reading chapter 13 of Krishna book by A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, The Stealing of the Boys and the Calves by Brahma. Sukadeva Goswami was very much encouraged when Maharaj Parikshit asked him why the cowhead boys did not discuss the death of Agasura until after one year had passed. He explained this, My dear king, you are making the subject matter of the transcendental pastimes of Krishna fresher by your inquisitiveness. It is said that it is the nature of the devotee to constantly apply his mind, energy, word, words, ears, etc. in hearing and chanting about Krishna. This is, this is called Krishna consciousness. And for one who is wrapped in hearing and chanting about Krishna, the subject matter never becomes hackneyed or old. That is the significance of transcendental subject matter in contrast to material subject matter. Material subject matter becomes stale and one cannot hear a certain subject for a long time. He wants change. But as far as transcendental subject matter is concerned, it is called Nitya Nava Navayamana. This means that one can go on chanting and hearing about the Lord and never feel tired, but remain fresh and eager to hear more and more. It is the duty of the spiritual master to disclose all confidential subject matter to the inquisitive and sincere disciple. Thus Sukadeva Goswami began to explain why the killing of Agasura was not discussed until one year had passed. Sukadeva Goswami told the king, now hear of this secret with attention. After saving his friends from the mouth of Agasura and killing the demon, Lord Krishna brought his friends to the bank of the Yamuna and addressed them as follows. My dear friends, just see how this spot is very nice for taking lunch and playing on the soft sandy Yamuna bank. And you can see how the lotus flowers in the water are beautifully blown and how they distribute their fragrance all around. The chirping of the birds along with queen of the peacocks, surrounded by the whispering of the leaves in the trees, combine and present sound vibration that echo another. And this, and this just enriches the beautiful scenery created by the trees here. Let us have our lunch in this spot because it is also already late and we are feeling hungry. Let the calves remain near us and let them drink water from the Yamuna. While we engage in our lunch taking, the calves may engage in eating the soft grasses that are in this spot. On hearing this proposal from Krishna, all the boys became very glad and said, Certainly. Let us all sit down here to take our lunch, they then let loose the calves to eat the soft grasses. Sitting down on the ground and keeping Krishna in the center, they began to open their lunch boxes brought from home. Lord Sri Krishna was seated in the center of the circle and all the boys kept their faces toward him. They ate and constantly enjoyed seeing Lord face to face. Krishna appeared to be the all of a lotus flower and the boys surrounding him appeared to be its different petals. The boys collected flowers, leaves and, and flowers and the barks and trees and placed their lunch and them, on them as well as in their lunch boxes. And thus they began to eat their lunch keeping company with Krishna while taking lunch. Each boy began to manifest different kinds of relations with Krishna and they enjoyed each other's company with joking words. While Lord Krishna was thus enjoying lunch with his friends, his flute was pushed within the belt of his cloth on his right side and his bugle and cane were pushed on in, in on and left hand side of his cloth. 
In his left palm he was holding a lump of food prepared with yogurt, butter, rice and pieces of fruit salad which could be seen through his paddle like finger and joints. The Supreme Personality of Godhead who accepts the results of all great sacrifices was laughing and joking and enjoying a lunch with his friends in Vindavan and thus the scene was being observed by the demigods from heaven. As for the boys, they were simply enjoying transcendental bliss in the company of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. At that time, the calves that were pasturing nearby entered into the deep forest, illured by new grasses, and gradually went out of sight. When the boys saw that the calves were not nearby, they became afraid of their safety, and they immediately cried out, Krishna, Krishna is the killer of fear. Fear personified. Everyone is afraid of fear personified, but fear personified is afraid of Krishna. By crying out the word Krishna, the boys at once transcend the fearful situation out of his great affection. Krishna did not want his friends to give up their pleasing lunch engagement and go searching for the calves. He therefore said, My dear friends, you need not to interrupt your lunch, go on enjoying. I am going personally to find the calves. Thus Lord Krishna is still carrying the lump of yogurt and rice preparation in his left hand and immediately he started to search out the calves in the caves in the caves and the bushes. He searched in the mountain holes and in the forest, but nowhere could he find them. At the time when Agasura was killed and the demons were looking on the incident with great surprise, Brahma who was born of the lotus flower growing out of the navel of Vishnu also came to see. He was surprised how little boy like Krishna could act so wonderfully, although he was informed that the little cowhead boy was the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He wanted to see more of the Lord's glorious pastimes, and thus he stole all the calves and the cowhead boys and took them to a different place. Lord Krishna therefore, in spite of searching for the calves, could not find them, and he even lost his boyfriends on the bank of the Yamuna, when, where they had been taking their lunch in the form of a cowhead boy. Lord Krishna was very little in comparison to Lord Brahma, but because he is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he could immediately understand that all the calves and the boys had been stolen by Brahma. Krishna thought, Brahma has taken away all the boys and calves. How can I alone return to Vrindavan? The mothers will be aggrieved. Therefore, in order to satisfy the mothers of his friends as well as to convince Brahma of the supremacy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, he immediately expanded himself as the cowhead boys and calves. In the Vedas, it is said that the Supreme Personality of Godhead has already expanded himself into so many living entities by his energy. Therefore, it was not very difficult for him to expand himself again into so many boys and calves. He expanded himself to become exactly like the boys who were of all different features and facial and bodily constructions and who were different in their clothing and ornaments and in their behavior and personal activities. In other words, although each boy being an individual soul had entirely different tastes, activities and behavior, Krishna exactly expanded himself into all the different positions of the individual boys. He also became the calves who were also of different sizes, colors, activities, etc. This was possible because everything is an expansion of Krishna's energy. In the Vishnu Purana, it is said, Parashya Brahmana Sakti, whatever we actually see in the cosmic manifestation, be it matter or the activities of the living entities, is simply an expansion of the energies of the Lord, as heat and light are the different expansions of fire. Thus expanding himself as the boys and calves in the individual capacities and surrounded by such expansions of himself, Krishna entered the village of Vindavan. The residents had no knowledge of what had happened. After entering the village of Vindavan, all the calves entered their respective cow sheds and the boys went to their respective mothers and homes. The mothers of the boys heard the vibration of their flutes before their entrance and to receive them they came out of their homes and embraced them and out of maternal affection milk was flowing from their breasts as they allowed the boys to drink it. However, their offering was not exactly to their boys but to the Supreme Personality of Godhead who had expanded himself into such boys. 
This was a chance for all the mothers of Vrindavan to feed the Supreme Personality of Godhead with their own milk. Therefore, not only did Lord Krishna give Yasoda the chance to feed him, but this time he gave the chance to all the other elder gopis. All the boys dealt with their mothers as usual, and the mothers also on the, on the approach of evening bade their respective children, decorated them with tilaka and ornaments and gave them necessary food after the day's labor. The cows also who had been away in the pasturing grounds returned in the evening and called their respective calves. The calves immediately came to their mothers and the mothers began to lick the bodies of the calves. These relations of the cows and the gopis with their calves and boys remain unchanged. Although actually the original calves and boys were not there, actually the cows' affection for their calves and the older gopis' affection for their boys causelessly increased. Their affection increased naturally. Even though the calves and the boys were not their offspring, all, although the cows and elder gopis of Vrindavan had greater affection for Krishna than for their own offspring, after this incident their affection for their offspring increased unlimitedly. Exactly as it did for Krishna, for one year continuously Krishna himself expanded as the calves and cowherd boys and was present in the pasturing ground. As it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna's expansion is situated in everyone's heart as the super soul. But in this case, instead of expanding himself as the super soul, he expanded himself as a portion of calves and cowherd boys for one continuous year. One day, a few days before a year had passed, Krishna and Balaram were maintaining the calves in the forest when they saw some cows grazing on the top of the Govardhan hill. The cows could see down the valley where the calves were being taken care of by the boys. Suddenly, on sighting the calves, the cows began to run toward them. They leaped downhill with joined palms and rear legs. The cows were so melted with affection for the calves that they did not care about the rough path from the top of Govardhan Hill down to the pasturing ground. They approached the calves with their milk bags full of milk and they raised their tails upwards. When they, when they were coming down the hill, their milk bags were pouring milk on the ground out of intense maternal affection for the calves. Although they were not their own calves, these cows had their own calves, and the calves that were grazing beneath Govardhan Hill were larger. They were not expected to drink milk directly from the milk bag, but were satisfied with grass. Yet all the cows came immediately and began to lick their bodies, and the calves also began to suck milk from the milk bags. They appeared to be a great bond of affection between the cows and calves. When the cows were running down from the top of Govardhan Hill, the men who were taking care of them tried to stop them. All the cows are taken care of by the men, and the calves are taken care of by the boys. And as far as possible, the calves are kept separate from the cows, so that the calves do not drink all the available milk. Therefore, the men who were taking care of the cows on the top of the Govardhan Hill tried to stop them. But they failed, baffled by their failure. They were feeling ashamed and angry. They were very unhappy. But when they came down and saw their children taking care of the calves, they all of a sudden became very affectionate toward the children. It was very astonishing, although the men came down disappointed, baffled and angry. As soon as they saw their own children, their hearts melted with great affection. At once their anger, dissatisfaction and unhappiness disappeared. They began to show paternal love for the children, and with great affection they lifted them in their arms and embraced them. They began to smell their children's head, heads and enjoy their company with great happiness. After embracing their children, the men took the cows back to the top of Govardhan Hill. Along the way began to think of their children, and affectionate tears fell from their eyes. When Balaram saw this extraordinary exchange of affection between the cows and the calves and between the fathers and the children, when neither the calves nor the children needed so much care, he began to wonder why this extraordinary thing had happened. He was astonished to see all the residents of Vindavan so affectionate to their own children exactly as they had been to Krishna. Similarly, the cows had grown affectionate, affectionate to their calves as much as Krishna. 
Balaram therefore concluded that the extraordinary show of affection was something mystical, either performed by the demigods or by some powerful man. Otherwise, how could this wonderful change take place? He concluded that this mystical change must have been caused by Krishna, whom Balaram considered his worshipable personality of Godhead. He thought, it was arranged by Krishna and even I could not check its mystic power. Thus Balaram understood that all these boys and calves were only expansions of Krishna. Balaram inquired from Krishna about the actual situation. He said, My dear Krishna, in the beginning I thought that all these calves and cowherd boys were either great sages and saintly persons or demigods. But at present it appears that they are actually your expansions. They are all you. You yourself are playing as the calves and boys. What is the mystery of this situation? Where have the, those other calves and boys gone? And why are you expanding yourself as the calves and boys? Will you kindly tell me what is the cause? At that request of Balaram, Krishna briefly explained the whole situation, how the calves and the boys had been stolen by Brahma and how Krishna was concealing the incident by expanding himself so people would not know that the original calves and boys were missing. While Krishna and Balaram were talking, Brahma returned after a moment's interval according to the duration of his life. We have information of Lord Brahma's duration of life from the Bhagavad Gita. One thousand times the duration of the four ages or one thousand times four thousand three hundred twenty four million three hundred twenty thousand years constitute hmm, Brahma's 12 hours. Similarly, one moment of Brahma's time is equal to one year of our solar calculation. After one moment of Brahma's calculation, Brahma came back to see the fun caused by stealing the boys and calves. But he was also afraid that he was playing with fire. Krishna was his master and he had played mischief for fun by taking away his calves and boys. He was really anxious, so he did not stay away very long. He came back after a moment. By his calculation, he saw that all the boys and calves were playing with Krishna in the same way as when he had come upon them. Uh, although he was confident that he had taken them and made them lie down sleep under the spell of his mystic power, Brahma began to think, all the boys and calves were taken away by me and I know they are still sleeping. How is it that a similar batch of boys and calves is playing with Krishna? Is it that they are not influenced by my mystic power? Have they been playing continually for one year with Krishna? Brahma tried to understand who they were and how they were un un uninfluenced by his mystic power. But he could not ascertain it. In other words, he himself came under the spell of his own mystic power. The influence of his mystic power appeared like snow in darkness or a glow worm in the daytime. During the night's darkness, the glow worm can show some glittering power and the snow piled up on the top of a hill or on the ground can shine during the daytime. But at night, the snow has no silver glitter nor does the glow worm have any illuminating power during the daytime. Similarly, when the small mystic power exhibited by Brahma was before the mystic power of Krishna, it was just like a snow at night or a glow worm during the day. When a man of a small mystic power wants to, to show some potency to the presence of greater mystic power, he diminishes, he diminishes his own influence. He does not increase it. Even such a great personality as Brahma, when he wanted to show his mystic power before Krishna, became ludicrous. Brahma was thus confused about his own mystic power. In order to convince Brahma that all those calves and boys were not the original ones, the calves and boys who were playing with Krishna transformed into Vishnu forms. Actually, the original ones were sleeping under the spell of Brahma's mystic power, but the present ones seen by Brahma were all immediate expansion of Krishna or Vishnu. Vishnu is the expansion of Krishna, so the Vishnu forms appeared before Brahma. All the Vishnu forms were bluish color and dressed in yellow garments. All of them had four hands decorated with club, disc, lotus flower and corn shell. On their heads were glittering golden helmets inlaid with jewels. They were bedecked with pearls and earrings and garlanded with beautiful flowers. On their chests was the mark of Sri Vatsa. Their arms were decorated with amulets and other jewelry, and their necks were just like conch shells. Their legs were decorated with bells. 
their waists with golden bells and their fingers with jeweled rings. Brahma also saw that upon the whole body of each Lord Vishnu, from the lotus feet up to the top of the head, fresh tulsi leaves and buds had been thrown on a throne. Another significant feature of the Vishnu forms was that all of them were looking transcendentally beautiful. Their smiling resembled the moon sign and their glancing resembled the early rising of the sun. Just by their glancing they, show, they showed themselves to be the creators and maintainers of the modes of ignorance and passion. Vishnu repre represents the mode of goodness, Brahma the mode of passion and Lord Shiva the mode of ignorance. Therefore. As the maintainer of everything in this cosmic manifestation, Vishnu is also the creator and maintainer of Brahma and Lord Shiva. After this manifestation of Lord Vishnu, Brahma saw that many other Brahmas and Shivas and demigods and even insignificant living entities, down to the ants and very small straws, all moving and non-moving living entities, were dancing surrounding Lord Vishnu. Their dancing was accompanied by various kinds of music and all of them were worshipping Lord Vishnu. Brahma realized that all those Vishnu forms were complete in mystic power from the anima perfection of becoming smaller like an atom up to becoming infinite like the cosmic manifestation. All the mystic powers of Brahma, Shiva and all the demigods and the 24 elements of cosmic manifestation were fully represented in the person of Vishnu. By the influence of Lord Vishnu, all subordinate mystic powers were engaged in his worship. He was being worshipped by time, space, the cosmic manifestation, reformation, desire, activity and the three qualities of material nature. Lord Vishnu, Brahma and Lord Vishnu, Brahma also realized, is the reservoir of all truth, knowledge and bliss. He is the combination of three transcendental features, namely eternity, knowledge and bliss and he is the object of worship by the followers of Upanishads. Brahma realized that all the different forms of boys and calves transformed into Vishnu forms were not transformed by mysticism of the type that a yogi or demigod can display by specific powers invested in him. The calves and boys transformed into Vishnu murtis or Vishnu forms were not displays of Vishnu maya or Vishnu's energy but were Vishnu himself. The respective qualifications of Vishnu and Vishnu Maya are just like fire and heat. In the heat there is the qualification of fire, namely warmth, and yet heat is not fire. The manifestation of the Vishnu forms of the boys and the calves was not like the heat but was rather the fire. They were all ill actually Vishnu. Factually the qualification of Vishnu is full truth, full knowledge and full bliss. Another example can be given with material objects which are reflected in many, many forms. For example, the sun is reflected in many water pots, but the reflections of the sun in the many pots are not actually the sun. There is no actual heat or light from the suns in the pots, although they appear like the sun. But the forms which Krishna assumed were each and every one of one full Vishnu. The specific word used in this connection is Satya Gyananathananda. Satya means truth, jnana, full knowledge, ananta, unlimited, and ananda, full bliss. The glories of the Supreme Personality of Godhead are so great that the impersonalistic followers of the Upanishads cannot reach the platform of knowledge to understand them, especially the transcendental form of the Lord are beyond the reach of the impersonalist who can only understand through studying the Upanishads that the absolute truth is not matter or is not materially restricted. From Krishna's expansion into Vishnu forms, Lord Brahma could understand by his unlimited potency that everything movable and immovable within the cosmic manifestation is existing due to the expansion of the energy of the Supreme Lord. When Lord Brahma was thus standing baffled in his limited power and conscious of his limited activities within the eleven senses, he could realize that he was also a creation of the material energy. Just like a puppet, as a puppet has no independent power to dance but dances according to the direction of the puppet master. So the demigods and the living entities are all subordinate to the Supreme Personality of Godhead as it is stated in Chaitanya Charitamita. The only master is Krishna and all others are his servants. The whole world is under the waves of material spell and beings are floating 
like straws in water so their struggle for existence is continuing but as soon as one becomes conscious that he is the eternal servant of the supreme personality of godhead this maya or illusory struggle for existence is immediately stopped lord brahma who has full control over the goddess of learning and who was considered to be the best authority in vedic knowledge was thus perplexed being unable to understand the extraordinary power manifested by the supreme personality of godhead in the mundane world even a personality like brahma is unable to understand the mystic power of the supreme lord not only did brahma fail to understand but he was perplexed even to see display which was being manifested by krishna before him Krishna took compassion upon Brahma because of his inability to see how Krishna was displaying the forms of Vishnu and transforming himself into calves and cow cow head boys and thus while fully manifesting the Vishnu expansions he suddenly pulled his silk his curtain of yogamaya over the scene in the bhagavad gita it is said that the supreme personality of godhead is not visible due to the curtain spread by yogamaya that which covers the reality is mahamaya or the external energy which does not allow a conditioned soul to understand the supreme personality of godhead beyond the cosmic manifestation but the energy which is partially manifest the supreme personality of godhead and partially does not allow one to see see is called yoga maya brahma is not an ordinary conditioned soul he is far far superior to all the other demigods and yet he could understand He could not comprehend the display of the supreme personality of Godhead therefore Krishna willingly stopped manifesting any further potency the conditioned soul not only become bewildered but is con- completely unable to understand the certain of yog maya the curtain of yog maya was drawn so that brahma would not become more and more perplexed When Brahma was relieved from his perplexities he appeared to awaken from an almost dead state and he began to open his eyes with great difficulty thus he could see the eternal cosmic manifestation with common eyes he saw all around him the super excellent view of Vrindavan full with trees which is the source of life for all living entities he could appreciate the transcendental land of Vrindavan where all the living entities are transcendently ordinary na- ordinary nature and it is transcendent to ordinary nature in the forest of vindavan even ferocious animals like tigers live peacefully along with the deer and human beings he could understand that because of the presence of the supreme personality of godhead vindavan is transcendental to all other places and is free from lust and greed brahma thus found Sri Krishna the supreme personality of God had playing the part of a small cowherd boy he saw that little child with a hump of food lump of food in his left hand searching out his friends and calves just as he had actually been doing one year before after their disappearance immediately brahma dis- descended from his great swan carrier and fell down from the lord just like a before the lord just like a golden stick The word used among the Vaishnavas for offering respects is dandavat. This means falling down like a stick. One should offer respect to the superior Vaishnava by falling down straight with his body just like a stick. So Brahma fell down before the Lord just like a stick to offer respect and because the complexion of Brahma is golden he appeared to be like a golden stick lying down before Lord Krishna. All the four helmets on the heads of Brahma touched the, the lotus feet of Krishna. Brahma being very joyful began to shed tears and he washed the lotus feet of Krishna with the tears repeatedly he fell and rose as he recalled the wonderful activities of the lord after pre- repeating obeisances for a long time Brahma stood up and smeared his hands over his eyes seeing the lord before him he trembling he he trembling began to offer prayers with great respect humility and attention Thus ends the Bhakti Vedanta purport of the 13th chapter of Krishna the stealing of the boys and calves by Brahma Hare Krishna